Stop, stop. <laughs> Good thirsty Thursday morning, you too, buddy. No, I hope all of you are doing well and swell today. Thomas and I got my bestie Riley here, and her and I are going to shoot the, ah, shoot the breeze. And I'm going to show you guys how I use my Keurig, and I think she's going to make coffee. And yeah, so yep. welcome to my channel. It's awesome to have you on my channel, and I'm looking forward to doing videos with you on my channel. Um, so, yeah, do you want to tell the YouTube that he knows a little bit about yourself? Hello, everybody. I am Riley. McDiley. <laughs> and I'm actually Thomas's best friend. And to make things perfectly clear, best friend does not mean girlfriend. Um, I know people sometimes will think, oh, you know, it's a female, it's a best friend, it's a girlfriend. No, we're just really good friends. We've been friends for how long? Since 2020. Three. Oh, yeah, it's about, oh, going on three years, because we met after the safari, so that'd be three years in, like, late August, early September. And so, yeah, we've been best friends for a while. And um, so we, we have a lot in common. We have, you know, we love our coffee. Love our same types of music, things yep. like that. So yep. we we have a lot, and I mean a lot in common. Yeah. So. Yep. And so you'll get to see me on here sometimes as well. We have our own private channel yep. too. But I thought it would make more. I'm telling them this. I thought it would make a lot of sense for us to start doing videos together on on my channel, because um, she has some great ideas and um, she's going to be doing videos by herself. And it really would be nice for my channel to have some variety. I mean, I I, I you know enjoy doing the same things over and over and over again, but it really would be nice to have uh, to have some variety on my channel. So. Yeah. You start. And the reason you guys aren't hearing mine is I'm going to demonstrate my coffee maker next week sometime on there. Because it's really quiet. You can barely hear it. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm going to demonstrate to you a couple smart appliances that I have. And he thought it would be better if I uploaded them on my own so that you guys could actually hear these sound effects because they have certain sounds, especially the air fryer, has certain sound effects that you guys as blind individuals, if you are blind, would be able to hear what it does. And Thomas thought it would be a lot better for me to do it on my own and show you. Now, he might, we might even have him on FaceTime. I don't know yet. We haven't decided that part yet. I but even, I could even mute, you know. Yeah. But you guys would get to hear what the air fryer sounds like and memorize the the different sounds that it makes so that you don't you know, hear something wrong and be like, "Oh, it's okay," and it's not. Because that is one thing I do recommend with appliances, especially smart appliances, memorize what they sound like because it, they could easily screw you up and throw you off. Absolutely. Yep. If, you know, like the microwave at my apartment basically sounded like it was normal, but it was really smoking and we didn't know it. Right. So it's very important with appliances to pay attention to their normal sound effects. Right. Because if you don't, something bad could possibly potentially go wrong and you don't want that. Right. So guys, my Keurig is pretty easy to use. Um, so all I do is open up the thing, put the pot in, and make the coffee. Now, here's something important to, to remember. Okay, if you're blind or if you're visually impaired, always make sure that the cup is always underneath the spout before you hit the two magical buttons. Well, mine has, every curious different, but mine has 
two buttons that you hit, and it's a it, it's a really easy keyring to use. So if I was to put a if I was to put a so what what I what I do is I I was gonna throw this away this pot away, but if I was to um, all I do is just put a pot in, close the lid, and then press the two buttons, and that's it. It's very simple. And yes, in case anybody's wondering, do you know how to fill up the water by yourself? Yes, I do. I actually taught myself how to use the Keurig, so there you have it. And Riley has two channels, if you guys want to subscribe to it. Uh, Riley Rose Entertainment, and the other one, I can't think of the name right now, but... Blind Insight Vlogs. Yeah, Blind Insight, yep. So just... And, so it's Blind, the B's capitalized, Insight, all one word, I-N, the I's capitalized, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, Vlogs, V is in victory of the capital, L-O-G-S. Yep. Just thought I'd throw that out there. <clears throat> I actually have four, so I have the Blind Insight Gaming... Which I don't have videos on yet, and I also have Riley's Country Kitchen too, which is a cooking mm. channel. So if you're into cooking, feel free to follow Riley's Country Kitchen. Again, everything's caps. The, the Riley Country and Kitchen is all caps. And then um, if you're into gaming, then you have Blind Insight Gaming. I changed the 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 title of it. I almost said lyrics. Jeez, uh, I'm thinking, yikes! Nah. Really, brain? <laughs> um, but. I changed it from what it used to be to a different title. So yeah. So I'll be playing games on there and just you know things like that. Nice. Cool. And then of course Riley Rose Entertainment is my karaoke channel, which I've got to start uploading again, and I have my ways now. Yay! So it's to my best. So is Rose your your middle name? Yes. That's what I thought. Yep. And your last name is that is that your your piece of shit biological dad's last name? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, it's the whole name's been made up. It was a whole stage name that was made up. Really? Yeah. No kidding. Yep, ah. I changed the whole damn thing. Oh, okay. Yep. And guys, the reason why I call him a piece of shit is because he's done some terrible things her that we won't get into but just in case like dude why'd you call her own dad a piece of shit that's not nice well he is not nice my bio is he's he an asshole some terrible things and we're just good to her and we'll just leave it at that but yeah. anyway uh wow okay so i i thought that was actually your last name okay no i um basically i was going to be lily at first i wanted to because ch i hate my real name yeah. which i won't tell you what my real name is because i hate it but um, I was going to be Lily Rose, and I thought, no, Lily's more of a, like, laid-back type name. And I'm more this fiery, spunky type. I don't want to be all laid-back all the time. <laughs> and so yeah. I changed it to Riley because I like the name of Riley. Well, the middle name, I had always had it as Rose. And um, I didn't realize that it was actually the name of a music venue near me. Not near me now, but it was near... Well, it is kind of close to me, but not, like, real close. Mm -hmm. The last name was taken from a music venue mm -hmm. that I absolutely love called mm -hmm. the Phrase Pavilion mm -hmm. in Kettering, Ohio. And I borrowed the last name Phrasey from the Phrase. I just called it Phrasey and oh. just named it. Because they're, they're the people, the, the venue was named after the Phrase family. Well, and I just added a Y and took the E off. Yeah. Well, I have a 12 year old cousin named Riley, except he's not a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That name could go either way. And it can be spelled differently, too. I've seen it R Y L I E. I've seen it R Y L E Y. I've seen it. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't want kids, but if I, had a, if I did want kids and if I had a girl, baby names would be easy for me to pick. Because there are a lot of baby girl names. There are a lot of, you know, girl baby girl names that i like i love yeah. the name riley i love the name felicity i love the name lily i love the name Lindsay. i love the name abby mm -hmm. yeah 
He wants to be a girl dad if he was a dad. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, my, shoot. My, my. And he loves, we both love sweet coffee. We love our coffee yeah, sweet. Yeah, we have a lot in common. We, 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 have, we, we have a lot in common than I thought we did. I mean, I knew we had things in common, but we have a ton of things in common. Like, the name of our bio mothers is the same? Yep. Our, my brother and his sister have the same exact birthday. Correct. And I'm like, I remember, I'll never forget this as long as I live. And I got to tell this story on this channel because this is hilarious. I'm sitting there and I said, when, when's your sister's birthday? And he said it. And I go, come again? What did you just say? Repeat that? So he said it again. And I go, what? Am I hearing you right? Say that again. And I picked the iPad up. But he said it again. I'm like, dude, are you sitting down? He's like, yeah, why? I'm like, because that's my brother Matt's birthday yeah. too. And speaking of her brother Matt... He, like me, is a Tom Petty fan, and uh, back in the day, when Riley was a kid, he would play basketball, and he would be cranking to You Know How You Don't Know How It Feels by Tom Petty, which is off the Wildflowers album. Great song. Yeah. And I thought yes. that was the coolest thing. Oh, yeah. He would crank his music up. He'd crank that one. He'd crank Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. And I, and I told Riley if I knew him... I would talk his ear off about Tom Petty all day. Yeah. And, and guys, I had to tease my bestie and call him an alien because he didn't know who Gordon Lightfoot was. <laughs> and I made a joke and I said, I wonder if Gordon Lightfoot was laying on his feet. But anyway. Anyway, he's, he's my bestie's a nutcase. You guys all know that by now, I'm sure. But he's crazy. He's crazy. Huh. But, yeah. Um... I just thought that was the coolest thing when she told me that he would play basketball and have you, you know, how, you don't know how it feels cranked up. Yeah. Hmm. And the, the funny thing is about my coffee pot is I'm using some oversized filters and my Hamilton Beach don't throw a bitch fit about it. Hmm. Because my Keurig that I have did it threw the biggest fit. It did not like my filters at all. Now, my sister... Um, who I've never talked about on this channel, so you, you guys might go, "Wow, you have a sister!" So I never talk. I never talk about her, but um, just because she never comes up in in conversation. But my sister, she's 40, 43, and when I was little, her and I had a lot of fun. So the the room where I have my keyboard, guys, that is that was her bedroom. When I was little, and uh, when I was little, I'd go down. I'd go down there, and and her and I would rock out. She'd have nine inch nails on. Can you imagine a, a, a you know two or three year old listening to nine inch nails? Uh, <laughs> and what else she'd have on? She'd had she'd have on um, the real McCoy, um, which is a band. Well, it was a band. Uh, what else? Oh, and Nirvana, Nirvana, Nirvana. She had, she played a lot a lot of uh, Nirvana, and she played Corn. Have you ever heard of the band Corn? Yes. She played a lot of corn. So, yeah. And there was one time when I was down there and the music was so loud, I missed a school bus. Yay. So that was fun. So her and I, her and I had a lot of fun when, uh, when I was little, jamming out. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it, just like yesterday, I was, I was listening to an interview with uh, <clears throat> the actor Vince Bontesuela. Excuse me for screwing that up on my ex-boyfriend's channel. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he plays Francis in the game Left for Dead. And uh, he was telling how he would he had met these people at this comedy club, because he does stand-up as well. And his, this the man said that him and his six-year-old played Left for Dead. And I'm going, six-year-olds should not be playing Left for Dead. What the hell? No, 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 no. That is not a game for a six-year-old. No. Oh. No. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is why the wackos out there blame video games. Because you have psycho parents like this that let their kids play violent video games. Right. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it how it is. They have their kids playing these violent games, and then they blame the games when their kids go psychotic. Right. And right. it's not the game's fault. It's their fault for letting them play it. Right. I mean, hello. Which... Um, don't get me started on that subject because that just makes me mad. 
Because, I mean, they blame these games. And let me tell you, these games saved me from a pretty bad place. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Mm. Because, you know, mental health... That is one subject that is very important to me, and I will, I will find ways to talk about it and teach people about it because that even, is we very even, important. We could even do mental health top, topics on here if you'd like. I could do that. Absolutely, absolutely. I could definitely do that because yeah. that's a very important subject. Absolutely. Yep. Mental health Monday. How about that? There you go. I like it. But I'm just really lucky that I had a sister who was not mean or spiteful or, um, you know, I'm lucky that I had a sister who, you know, took care of me when I was little. And her and I had a lot of fun jamming out. It reminds me, it reminds me a lot of me and my brother, Matt. We used to do that, too. I mean, we're close to an age, but, you know, it was like Matt was a blast. I mean, he was a riot and a half. Hmm. Yeah. Still it. Yep. Yep. There was an out. Al- there was an album that she had on CD by Nine Inch Nails when I was little called "The Downward Spiral," and uh, I remember. I always remember she would play songs off of that album, and I liked it. You know, even though it was hard. You know, hard hard stuff. You know, meaning hard. Make you know, like not. Um, how do I say? It? Uh, it was hard, like it was, um... Metal. Yeah, I don't know if Nine Inch Nails would be considered metal, but, um... You know, just picture me... Oh, so it is. Just picture me, guys, at three years old, listening to Nine Inch Nails, you know? Um, kind of a funny thing, but... No, her, her and I had a lot of fun jamming out when I was little. Yep, and, and it's good to have good memories like that, because... You know, not everybody has that growing up. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. Not not everybody gets to have those wonderful memories like that. With me, it's my grandparents, and you know them. They were like very supportive. They were fun. Yeah. They were awesome people. And when when my grandma died when I was like seven years old, it was it was it was very difficult for me. Yeah. Because my support system was half gone right and then when my grandpa died when i was 18 it just went to hell on earth real fast is that your dad's biological father no mom's oh your mom's i didn't i never lived with with my bio dad right yeah he was yeah Mm -hmm. i knew him i seen him when i was nine years old asked him if if he was my dad he admitted it then he disappeared out of my life for nine years the only way to get him to my graduation party was to offer him alcohol because wow. he's a own alcoholic. And that was the only way to get him to my graduation. Then I didn't see him until I was about 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And then I saw him for about a year and then I, I left and then I didn't see him again until I was like in my thirties. Wow. I mean, so the guy's been like on and off in my life and never, never will change and I'll never speak to him again. I mean, that's how bad it is. Right. Let's just put it this way. I'm just going to, I'm not going to give details, but I would be cited if it wasn't for his dumb ass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's the reason that I don't have vision. All right. And, you know, if you're in a relationship like that, and if you, if you, so I'm sure you caught on that it was an abusive relationship my mother was in with him. If you're in a relationship like that, get the hell out. Oh, yeah. Just get the hell out. Mm hmm. And it's simple. Get out. Take the kids and book it. Get and, out. And if you were in a toxic relationship that I was in, get out. Leave. Get out. Run for the hills. Seriously. Yeah. Get out. Because I shouldn't have put up with what I put up with for over a year. No, you shouldn't have. And had I known, I would have kicked his butt. Because I would have found a way to get to where he's at. And I'd have kicked his butt and made him uh. leave. Because... You don't need that. You don't need verbal abuse. You don't need physical abuse. You don't need sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, anything like that. Abuse is wrong, period. Right. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, who would want to be with somebody who is snippy all the time and gives attitude, people attitude all the time? 
Not me. No, not me. I mean, even me with the relationship I was in, you know, it wasn't abusive per se physically, but it was just an emotional drain. And basically, you know, I, I collect reborn dolls. And even though a lot of people would be like, you know, well, they ain't real. They ain't real. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. If you can't do that for them when they look like real kids, what are you going to do for your real kids when you have them? Are you going to stay in the situation? No, you're going to get the hell out of it. Right. That's what you do. You get the hell out of it. Yeah. You don't stay in it because that just makes it worse on you and it makes it worse on your mental health. You have to be out of the situation completely. Yeah. You know? Now, you YouTuberinos don't know this, but uh, me and this person actually did break up um we broke up once we broke up in january we actually broke up twice we, so we broke up in january of 2022 or 2023 then we broke up in april of 2023 and the first and the second time when we broke up for the second time i should have just i should have just said we're done for good but it is what it is gullible naive what happened, what happened, happened. We can't change what happened, what happened. You know, it is what it is. Oh. What, what happened, happened. Yep. And if it's, and, and my advice to you, and a lot of people would be like, it's wrong advice to give. But if it's toxic like that, one chance and you're done. If it's not really toxic, that's when you give somebody multiple chances. But if it's toxicity... One and done. And that's it was. It. it was toxicity all the way, as you know. And that's when it should have been one and done. Because people ask me, why do you give people one and done chances? If it's toxic, that's why. You give them one chance. If they're toxic, get the fuck out. <clears throat> right. Get out. And in, t in case you guys are wondering how am I doing or how I'm doing with the breakup, I'm doing a lot better um, last week was extremely rough for me, but, um, I'm doing a lot better. I mean, the hurt is still very much there, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better. So, yeah. So if you're in a toxic relationship like I was, don't stay. I mean, I understand, no. I understand that being single sucks. Um, but here, 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 here's the thing. Would you rather be in a toxic relationship or... Would you rather be single and do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it? Exactly. I would go with the second choice. I would too. And I don't like being single. I don't like being alone. I don't. No, but, but it's better to be alone and get to do what you want than being with somebody and being miserable all your life. Right. Because I'm going to tell you something, guys. Thomas, this is the Thomas I know right here. Okay? When he was with her... When I met her the very first time, I could smell toxicity a mile away without even knowing it. And I could sense when I talked to him privately, I'm thinking, this is not my best friend anymore. This is a guy I don't even know. Something's not right here. I could smell that crap a mile away. Yeah. And, you know, toxicity sucks. So bad, it's not funny. I hate toxicity. And breakups suck too, but you they know, do. All, time heals all wounds. And you know what? If you're if you're going through a, a breakup right now, just know that you know the hurt's gonna be there. You know the the betrayal's gonna be there or whatever. But um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I have done a lot of relationships on my. Ch I've talked about. Um, relationships a lot on my channel you guys can go you know watch my my older videos and i used to do a lot of um relationship topics um when i first started doing videos again um back in 2018 but um you know if you're if you're going through a breakup just know that there is a light of, at the end of the tunnel just uh focus on focus on yourself and and yep. and you know and Get back to the things that you that, love. Get back to the things that you enjoyed doing before you and your ex started dating. Yeah, like, and, um, and there's, there's going to be memories, guys. There's going to be memories. You know, let's say you've been split for a few months, 
and you and your relationship had been together, you and your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend have been together for, let's say, a few years. There's going to be memories. Something's going to trigger a memory for you, and you're going to cry. And it's okay to cry. Men, men, hear me. Men, I'm a woman, okay? Hmm. It is okay for you to shed tears. And I have shed and and through these last three weeks in a day, because we've been working on for three weeks in a day, I have shed tears, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm not ashamed to admit it at all. It's okay for you men to shed tears. My ex-boyfriend did not. He would not cry over the loss. He never cried. It is okay to cry. It is not, you are not less of a man than to, to cry. Uh -uh. In fact, I admire men that cry over, over things. I, you know, and, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I didn't, because <clears throat> I did. I have shed tears. Yeah, and there's going to be times where you're going to see, you might see something on a movie that you guys both loved, or you might see, you know, if you watch that movie again, or if you need to wait a while to watch that movie again. But it might be, there might be a scene, like a kissing scene or something, and it reminds you of their kiss. Or there might be something that just reminds you of them, a day of the year that comes up. Like, for example, Monday for me is the day that me and my ex first got together. And that was the day that we first got together. And the 4th of July is the day that, you know, my, fa my parents didn't support it because my ex was blind. Right. And... So, I mean, there are days that do still get me, and we've been split up since 2020. Right. And, you know, there are still times that it gets me, and there's, you know, songs that you guys might have loved. If you need to take a break from those songs for a while, it's okay. <laughs> but what's not okay is letting it eat you alive. That is what's not okay. Don't, don't push yourself away from your friends. Don't push yourself no. from... You know, the support that you have, don't push yourself completely away from that music because there is good in that song, even though it might have brought back memories. Wait a while if you need to. I waited a while for Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. I love that song, but I waited because it was our song. Right. It take, It might take a while. It might take a while to get you through it. But you guys, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, yeah. It's not the end of the world. You'll no. find something else. And that's what I've told my bestie. You're, you'll find somebody better. Yeah. And also, um, don't jump into a brand new relationship no. right after one ends because you have to... You have to heal. Excuse you. Yes, excuse me. You have to heal, you tuberinos. You have to heal. You have to heal. You can't rebound like that. It does not work that way. Rebound you, relationships you don't have to work. Grieve. No. You have to grieve your losses. I've been single for years. Yeah. Go, a little over four years now. You, you have to grieve your losses. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to, you know, say that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It's so no. unhealthy. Wait on who you want. If you have an interest, wait on them and that's what i'm doing <clears throat> that's exactly what i'm doing you now, wait on if not now, they're now, taken. now i'm i am i'm not I'm, you know I, uh i am interested in somebody but i'm not gonna say who that's i'm not gonna say who that's, <laughs> i'm not gonna say who that somebody is yet it's just uh not not yet but, um, I just don't feel like, uh, putting that out there right now, but I am interested in somebody and I've been waiting and I'm going to continue to wait. So, and, because you never know when that somebody's ready when they're not ready. So you've don't got to push. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't push, push them. Okay. Them I, them okay. I, I let this person know. When we were on a FaceTime call a couple weeks I let this person know, who was going to remain anonymous, uh, just for now, that I was interested, but I, I, let, I let this person know in a subtle way, because I didn't want to come off too strong. You never want to come off too strong. No. You never want to come off too strong. Um, and now she knows, and, you know, I'm just waiting until she's ready. And when she's ready, she'll tell me. <coughs> 
and but there are a lot of guys who um, push, 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 and that's very unattractive. Not only do they push, but some of them even play. Right. They play hearts, and from what he told me, correct me if I'm wrong, this girl that you're interested in got played, didn't she? Correct. Big time. She got played, and she got her heart crushed multiple times by guys telling her they wanted her, they wanted her, they wanted her, and then they took off to another woman's arms. Right. And that's when I told him, Thomas, my friend, wait on her. Right. Let her know you love her by waiting on her. I said, because see, her eyes, in her eyes, she's thinking, oh, shit, he's interested, but is he going to fuck off and, you know, run off with some other chick again? Right. Like the rest of That's what's going through her brain. That's right. what I told her. I said, yeah. wait on this chick. Wait yeah. on this chick because she's thinking, oh, he's just going to fuck around on me behind my back right. and he's going to play me just like the others have done. Because that's what's going through her brain is, right. you know, because <clears throat> I'm in her shoes. I've been played. So I know exactly what his love interest is going through. Hmm. Basically, this girl's been played so many times by several different guys. And they basically are playing her and saying, well, I want you, I want you, I want you. Two hmm. of them have done her like this twice or more, he hmm. told me. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, I told her. I well told him to tell her, you know, look, I'm waiting for you, honey. I'm waiting for you. I'm going to be there right. and do it. Don't go after some other chick. Don't be hitting on other chicks. Right. You know, and if you are truly interested, wait on her. Right. Now, find somebody. She's going to be happy for you no matter what. If she truly loves you, she's going to be happy, which I'm sure she would be. Right. So if, you know something happens and he finds somebody i told him i said thomas i said if you do find another girl down the road let her know this right very nicely just be like hey look you know i i did find somebody and i'm sure the girl will be happy because you're not dating and you're not sitting there saying i want you i want you i want you and then all of a sudden oh i don't want you anymore right. you're communicating it i said communicate it early right don't yeah. play her no so, and I was, I didn't know how to broach the subject, um, I, I, because the last thing I wanted to do was make her feel uncomfortable, but it came out, it's, you know, and it's out there, and... Yeah, he told me what he did, it was freaking hilarious, he told me what he did, so basically, basically what he did, here's what he did, this is hilarious, and he told me this, and I cried. I was laughing as hard. I'm like, Thomas, you are a trickster. You, mm -hmm. you. So basically, they were on a call together, and he told me, he said, we was on a call, and she said that she'd love to do a virtual double date with, you know, her other half and her best friend and her other half. And he goes, his exact words to her were, well, maybe we should. <laughs> and she got all flustered. What? We? Huh? What? Mm -hmm. Did you not do that to her? I did. He did that to her. And, and I'm like, Thomas, you didn't do that to her, dude, bestie. Oh, my God. And he did. He's like, yeah, I did, bestie. I did. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's hilarious, dude. I'm like, that is clever as heck. That was freaking the most clever way to show it. Instead of going, I want this. I'm going to get this. Blah, 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 blah. Don't push it because you don't know what of love interest is going through so do right. something subtle like that just throw them off yeah see just throw I mean, them off for, for me guys it's not about rejection like if if this person had come out and said well sorry i i don't feel the same i'm like all right no problem so for me it's not rejection for me it's about i don't want i don't want to make i don't i didn't want to make this person feel uncomfortable in any way so yeah like, hmm how do i how do I tell her I'm, you know, that, that I'm interested? And it just just came out, so. Yeah. And I thought it was clever. I thought it was clever. He told me that, and I just freaking lost it. I'm like, oh, dude, that was good. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for this person to let me know when she's ready. But anyway, guys, look, if you, if you, my, my advice is if you like somebody, let them know when you're ready to let them know, 
you know. Um, and once you let them know, and once it's out there, and if they reciprocate, and they're like, well, I'm interested in you too, still, still obviously don't push. Wait until um, the time is right, and wait until they're ready to date. Yep. So, yeah. And because if you push, not, it's, not just, it's not just guys who push. Women do it too, nope. but... Um, just Girls, same thing. Don't... My thing for women, and I've seen this with not only famous people, but I've seen it with my best friend. Girls, don't be the O word. Obsessed. Right. That is a turn off. Don't be obsessed. I've seen, I've seen girls. Hmm. I've actually seen chicks on Twitter. I'm not going to say names. Hmm. But I saw a girl on Twitter one time when it was Twitter hmm. say specifically about this obsession she had with a yeah. famous person. She legit said on X, she said, I'm losing sleep over this guy. I can't wait to meet him in person. I'm going, girl, you wow. are whack. Wow. That's just whack. Don't do shit like that. That's that's the turn off. You're, you're wanting to meet somebody, but you're that crazy. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit psychotic. Right. I mean, and it made me actually nauseous. I blocked the shit. It, it just grossed me out that bad. Right. Not that it was me, but it was somebody that I follow, and it just like I'm like, uh, no, right. I, I'm a fan of this person too, but I'm not this psycho about the guy. Right. I mean, yeah, his voice is sexier than heck, but uh, that doesn't uh, mean the uh, say, "Oh, I'm losing sleep over you, baby. I can't wait to meet you in person. Come get this." No. Right. Don't be obsessed. Don't be psychotic and obsessed, ladies right. and men. Same thing. And Don't be obsessed. Uh uh. And be this interested. Be kind about it. Don't be psychotic and possessive, possessive about it. And maybe be subtle like I was, you know? Yeah. I mean, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know how to bring it up, you know, but it came out, so. Yeah, just out of the blue. He, he, he told me, he said he was just talking to her just randomly <laughs> and then she brought up, oh, I would love to go on a virtual double date with, you know, with hmm. my friend and her other half. And my other half, when I get one, and she go and and he comes back at her and says, "Well, maybe one of these we could." And mm -hmm. and I was like, "Whoa, dude, you got her! Surprise <laughs> her! She so, wasn't ready for that." So just just if you're interested, let let him or her know, and 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 but wait until wait until they're ready. And they'll tell you when they're ready. It might not be today. Not might not be tomorrow. Might might not. Might not be next week, but they'll tell you when you're ready. You don't have to ask. Don't ask. Don't keep asking. That's a turn nope. off. That's a turn off. Yeah, it is. And and Thomas, didn't you ask her the other night and she started teasing you about something? Yeah. Because I, yeah. I just wanted to see where where we were at, you know, and I wanted to see if, you know, she was ready yet. But I only asked one time. Just once. It's okay yep. to ask just once. You know, it's that's okay. Once is acceptable. Not, you know, don't keep asking. Because if yeah. you do, your friendship could end. Then, exactly. Then you're out of luck. So what I'm, what I'm just gonna wait. I'm just waiting until. Uh, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm waiting until she's, gonna, tell me she's ready. Yep, and it might take a while. It just depends on their mental state, too. Yeah. Anyway. And if you truly love them, if you truly love them, you'll wait. Mm -hmm. If you truly love them, you'll wait on uh -huh. them. Uh-huh. Yep. So, yeah. But, um, seriously, in all seriousness, I, I, I appreciate all of y'all. I appreciate your support through this difficult time, through the breakup. Um... I really do. I'm so thankful that I have amazing friends who are um, supporting me through this uh, through this um, breakup. I mean, I've tried to put on a brave face, even in my videos, but honestly, it's really, really, really been tough. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to lie. It has been very tough. But I'm thankful for all my amazing friends and, of course, my bestie, of course. But I'm thankful for all of you, all of your support, 
and it, it uh, really means a lot. I'm so thankful to have um, uh, amazing friends who are um, supporting me through this difficult time, and hopefully, if hope, ho uh, ho hopefully, um, or through this breakup, I should say, through the breakup, I should say, and if you have, if you're going through a breakup, a support system is is really important. It really is. That's key. It's key. It really, really is. Um, you can never have, like my friend Haley says, you can never have too many friends. So. No. So yeah. <laughs> um. So. Anyways. Uh. That's all I got. Uh, so. Uh. What I'll do is I will probably be coming on next week doing some solo stuff, and so you'll get to see some of the appliance demonstrations. Yep. We'll get to see. I'm going to do. Now it's not replacing it, but we're doing another series on here, a brand new series. We'll have to figure out a title for it. Hmm. But uh, of course, you guys always see his chug videos. Well, I'm <laughs> going to do a. <laughs> hmm. And Thomas loves this. I'm going to do my version of chug videos, but it's not really chug videos. It's me trying out weird coffee flavors. Right. So it could be a pot of coffee with a flavor. It could be a K cup. You never know what the heck I'm going to pull out of my coffee connoisseur over here because I'm a coffee connoisseur. So uh, we're going to do all kinds of videos on that yep. where I like to try different things. Now, Thomas isn't as brave <laughs> when it comes to that, but I, I am willing to do it just to be funny and, you know, do it for entertainment purposes. Yeah. So awesome. I'm going to get some different types of K-Cups. Yep. And try some different ones and different creamers yep. and things like that. That'd so be awesome, folks. I hope you guys will stick around for that. We don't know what we're going to call the series yet. We'll probably talk about that off the, off camera and yeah. figure out what we'll call it. Yeah. But I'm going to definitely do that. And then we'll do uh, some mental health stuff. Absolutely. And things like that. And maybe, and we try to do help some, and maybe we could do some relationship topics if you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And tonight we're going to be doing a, techn a technology stories video. So. Yep. And that'll probably be on our personal channel. Back. Yeah, that's going to be our. Yeah. That's going to be on our channel, but I will also upload the video to this, to, to my channel as well. Um, so you guys will see it over there and you guys will see the video on, on, on my channel as well. This way you all get the best of both worlds. You guys, you guys will get to, you know, you guys won't miss out. You know, it won't just be over there. It'll also be over here. It'll be on my, the video will be on my channel as well. Um, yep. So, yeah. Um, if anybody wants to subscribe to our channel, it's called... The Life Adventures with Two Best Friends. And, of course, please subscribe to my channel, Doing Everything Blind. I hope you guys enjoyed the keyboard video I did or, or early this morning. I really haven't been doing... Since Savannah and I broke up, I really haven't been doing um, keyboard videos. I apologize. I just haven't felt like doing them since... Well, it's really not fun doing them on my own, but... I just haven't felt like doing keyboard videos, but now I'm, uh, but now, you know, since things are a lot better and since I am, um, starting to feel like my, my happy self again, um, I will be doing, uh, keyboard videos, um, hopefully with Constance or Nikki or maybe even you if you want to be in one. Um, so, yep, there's that, but I was downstairs early this morning and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do a keyboard video, why not, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, but, um, I apologize for not doing keyboard videos, I just haven't felt like doing them, um, and that's what's good about a channel with no topics, yeah, you can do all kinds of different things on a random channel, right, so, there's that. But anyway, um, oh, and by the way, I hope all of you enjoyed the two songs that I made up. She Makes Me Smile and then A Girl Like You. I hope all of you enjoyed those uh, two songs. My mom did. <laughs> uh, um, 
Yes, so... Yeah, shout out to her, her uh, adopted mom, even though she's not subscribed. And, <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, so please subscribe to my channel, Doing Everything Sighted. Just kidding. Doing Everything Blind. <laughs> And, of course, as I always say in my videos, y'all can share my videos on all social media platforms. And, uh, y'all take care.